welcome to the Discriminating Gamer, the Olivia Newton-John of board game review shows. Xana do, Xana don't. Say, do you like that Terminator Genesis? I know what you're thinking. Genesis allowed is not, is planet forbidden! But is it game forbidden? Let's take a look. Terminator Genesis, the miniatures game, The War Against the Machines, from River Horse, is a new tactical minis game in which two players are going to battle. One of them is going to take on the role of the evil Skynet endoskeleton Terminator machines, and of course the other player is going to take on the role of the human resistance fighters. This is a fairly deep and complex tactical miniatures game. The rulebook is well over 100 pages. And so rather than get into the minutia and detail of the full game, we decided to go ahead and uh, do our review on the fast play rules, which contain the basic core rules you need for this game. Now the game comes with a paper map board, some movement and fire templates, and of course a, a mound of tokens, various uh, sided dice, and of course a lots of different minis. Now the minis themselves, of course, you have to punch out and assemble yourselves, putting arms onto the actual figures. Now after you select a scenario, you're going to set up the terrain or any other tokens or whatnot that the scenario calls for. Now what you're going to do every round is essentially roll for the tactical edge. Each of you roll a d8 and you see who gets the higher number, you get the tactical edge, you get to decide if you're going to go first or your opponent is going to go first. Whoever the person with the tactical edge decides to go first, that player is going to roll the fate dice. Now the fate dice essentially tells you how many of your figures you can activate in a given impulse, those little mini turns. The fate dice allows you to activate one or two units or you can roll the fate uh, side. Now if you roll the fate uh, side of the dice, essentially you can't move any. It's the same as rolling a zero. However, there are rules where some of the human commanders can essentially rally and activate some of the soldiers. Once you decide who you're activating, you place green tokens next to them. Now, using the movement templates, you can either kind of, you know, crawl forward, you can walk normal forward and then fire, or instead of firing, you can just run the full distance. Now, once you've moved, you're going to go ahead and engage in combat. Now, depending on how far away you are using the templates, you may use ranged weapons or you may use kind of closer melee weapons. The closer you are generally is the better. Generally, if you're really close, you're going to roll, you're going to hit on a 3 plus, a little further away, a 4 plus, long range is going to be like a 5 plus. Now, cover may provide some advantages to the defender. So if you roll the dice and you score a hit, there is a chance that the uh, defender can be safe. Essentially, they roll a die, and if they're in cover, I think they roll a four or better, then it negates the hit. Now, if a character is hit, you have to roll again for damage. And if you roll for damage, you then compare that with their armor. Now, if it's above the armor, they get a damage point. They may be removed from the game. But if it's beneath that number, then that means that you have to the person who was hit has to roll resolution. Now, here you're going to roll a six-sided dice. On a roll of one, essentially, you run away. You're scared, you're a treat, you're off the board. It's like being killed. If you roll a two through a five, you are reeling, meaning you get a red token next to you, which means you've moved. So essentially, it's like losing a turn. If you roll a six, then in that case, there is no effect. Now, after all the guys on your side have activated their impulse, then you hand off to the other player. He rolls the fate dice. Then he can go ahead and activate a number of his units and go back and forth till all the units on the board have been activated and gone. You're playing for various objectives here. Some of the objectives, you may be looking for a certain token. Uh, some of them, you may, of course, just be playing a basic game of elimination. There may be other things, of course, you can do as well. Once one side or the other has fulfilled their specific objective for that scenario, they win and the game is done. The game also contains certain tactics for temporal displacement devices, which will allow you to re-roll one of your dice in a very interesting way. More on that later. So first of all, let me just talk a little bit about Terminator Genesis, the movie. Uh, I saw the movie uh, a few days ago. 
You know, I gotta tell you, the thing I loved about the first two Terminator films, the first one especially, was there was a simplicity, there was an elegance to the time travel, and in Terminator Genesis, the film, it just, ew, it just got a little too convoluted. It seemed like they had a lot of good ideas, but it just didn't quite work. Great action scenes, it was, you know, it's worth seeing, I guess, but it just, um, man, it, it just wasn't as good as it could have been. What about Terminator Genesis, the miniatures game? How does this game? Well, it's a pretty kind of standard tactical minis game. And when I say standard, I mean complex. Now, this is a lot more complex than, say, something like Star Wars X-Wing Miniatures, um, which is, I think, a fairly easy, probably one of the easiest miniatures games on the market today. And it's it, there's there's more to it than that. And this is a game that, of course, is looking to have people, have them encourage them, you know, paint figures and buy more expansion sets. It's looking, I think, to, to be a new kind of Warhammer alternative out there, which I think, you know, could be could be pretty cool for people that are interested in this, uh, this theme, this license. The minis themselves, you know, they, they look good when they're ready, but I gotta tell you, now in the rule book, there is a little place you can go that can give you advice on how to prepare the minis. I wished I had looked at that before I started taking things out because I ruined some of these, uh, some of the little plastic pieces. Generally, you've got the minis themselves and then the arms, and then you punch out the arms and you attach them. I was cutting out some of the arms and they bent and they were broken and that wasn't very good. So I, I, I got a lot of endoskeletons without arms, without guns, which doesn't look that good. Also, too, they're supposedly they snap into place. I guess you can glue them, but it, it kind of boasts the fact that you don't really need glue. And so, consequently, you're moving the figures around. They're falling off a lot. That was annoying. I'll be blunt right there. You'll want to glue these things, I think, to, to, to keep them together. The game also does come with one metal miniature of Kyle Reese. Some of the scenarios we played, some of the rules were a bit wonky. They didn't play as smoothly as we wanted them to. That was a little disappointing, and I'm not entirely sure it's the game's fault. I think maybe we were kind of screwing some stuff up here and there. But generally speaking, the, the, the tactical games where you're going out and you're trying to kill each other... Um, they were fun. They were interesting. The rules, you know, of course, there's, you know, you know, terrain tiles, you know, do things, the different weapons you have do things. And, and so that's cool. You're consulting charts in this game fairly regularly. Um, some people find that tedious. I don't know. I, I thought it was fun. I thought it worked in this game all right. Now, i got to tell you, so I mentioned the, the, the temporal <laughs> displacement devices. Now, I have to tell you, I just kind of went over that pretty quickly in my overview, but I have to tell you, the temporal displacement device rules, to me... That is probably the greatest thing about this game, and I'll tell you why. Now, theoretically, that's just the way that each player gets one reroll during the game. <laughs> but here's what you do. Thematically, each of you has an agent ready to go in a temporal displacement device. And so what you have to do is, if you want that reroll, you have to essentially make up a story. You have to say why you're sending that agent back in time, and what he is going to do to facilitate you making that reroll. Now, you can do that once, but your opponent, he can also send back his own temporal agent to block yours. He's got to kind of add to the story. So in the middle of this like intense, dice-rolling miniatures game, you're making up just these BS stories. So, so you're rolling four? <laughs> no, I'm activating my temporal reroll. All right. All right, but what, what is your excuse for activating your temporal reroll? Uh, let's see. Ooh! Uh, looking down, he spies the teddy bear that his daughter carried with her for her brief and short life, and he weeps, No! And falls to his knees, only to find the key to the temporal distortion device, and he realizes, This is my chance to save her life. So he activates it, but shoom, goes back in time, but he miscalculates and goes back two minutes instead of the two years he needed. <laughs> and thus, he is uh, able to reroll. And so, what, what is his name? I forget. Was that Biff? Biff. That's Biff. Biff. So, Man. Biff had some temporal energies reminating from his previous time travel, <laughs> and as the bullet pierced the armor of the Terminator, it sent him back no! three seconds in time. <laughs> and I gotta tell you, it is hilarious, and it is fun. And my one of my biggest, I don't know that it's a complaint, but... But one of my biggest hopes for this game is I wish there had been more of that. That was so much fun. It was just such a such an interesting and unexpected mechanic in the game. And it was hilarious. It added this just kind of really fun um, and it kind of exciting little metagame to it. And it was, it, was, it was all too brief. You can only do it once per game. And each, each of you can do it once per game. And it's too bad. I wish, I wish there had been more options for that. Or maybe they can expand on that in the future. But that was really cool. 
So depending on the, ex- the success of the film, we'll probably see more of these, more expansions in this Terminator miniatures game universe. And so there is a level of complexity here, and you can see they're building, they're preparing for, for, for much more beyond just the simple basic uh, core game there. And I think that's interesting, I think that's exciting. The game is, for me... There's, there's too much there, I think, to make this a game that I'm going to really invest in. Because really, fundamentally, you're not just going to buy a core game and, and that's that. You're going to be investing in the system. You can kind of tell they an- anticipated the uh, going beyond the core game because some of the scenarios that come with the core game clearly are designed to have more stuff. Again, you know, it's not a bad thing if if you want to invest in the system. Me, I'm probably not going to. So I was playing this game with my friend Nick, and he said, you know, if I was going to play a game like this, kind of a tactical combat game, I'd rather just play something like Imperial Assault, you know, where it's a little bit easier to get into, uh, and and maybe some of the actions are a little bit more clearly defined right there on on the cards in front of you. And I can kind of see his point, and I kind of feel the same way. I liked Terminator Genesis, the miniatures game. I didn't love it. I think there's a lot of people out there who will. I think there are some people that will really get a kick out of it. For myself... Um, I'm glad I played it. I don't know that I'm going to be playing it again in the future. Maybe somewhere down the road. So the recommendation for the Discriminating Gamer for Terminator Genesis, the miniatures game, is if you like minis games and you're looking for a system to invest in, I think this is a pretty decent one, and hopefully they'll expand further upon the temporal displacement devices. So the recommendation is try it before you buy it. Thank you once again for joining us today on The Discriminating Gamer. As always, we ask you to please leave a comment for us on YouTube, on Board Game Geek, on our Facebook page, or on thediscriminatinggamer.com. We ask you to please like us on Facebook and subscribe to us on YouTube. We are The Discriminating Gamer. And according to myth, the Earth was created in six days. But watch out! Here's Genesis! We'll do it for you in six minutes! Can somebody help me on my feet again? Yes. Ciao. They're all right there. I got a four. No, you gotta get a five or better. Damn it!